your name the mountains shake and crumble that's your name the oceans roar and tumble that's your name angels will bow will rejoice your people cry out Lord of all the earth we shout your name shout your name filling up the skies with endless praise endless praise Yahweh, Yahweh we love to shout your name oh Lord How's everybody doing? You guys, let's, why, don't we, why don't we all stand and we'll shout one out, another, maybe two more songs here. I hope it's built on nothing less. is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not 
my trust in the sweetest frame But holy trust in Jesus' name I hope it's built I hope it's built on nothing less In Jesus' blood since I've sung this one, maybe you guys too. You guys probably know it though. Lord of all creation. Lord of all creation. Of water, earth, and sky. 
heavens are your tabernacle. Glory to the Lord on high. God of wonders beyond our galaxy. You are holy, holy. The universe declares your majesty. Lord, thank you. Thank you for these beautiful songs, and thank you, Lord, that you've brought us together in this awesome place, Lord, to, to worship you, Lord, to have a meal together, to fellowship, and to just dive into you, Lord. I pray that today you would increase and that we would decrease, Lord, as we, as we take in uh, what you have for us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give a, just a round of appreciation for Danny here. Yeah. We're always so blessed when you come and lead us in worship. I appreciate it. Um, it's good to be back with you, you guys. And I, I've been away with Garrett and Jonathan for the past couple weeks. And uh, anyway, felt your prayers over there. It was a, a really an awesome trip. And i uh, just been looking forward to uh, today. We have a, just a unique... Uh, speaker. I, it's always fun, these breakfasts, to have, you know, just who the Lord puts on our heart to have come and share with the men. And this one was kind of different, you know, more from an intellectual, spiritual angle, and really talking about science and faith, science and the Bible, and how those two come together. And um, while I don't know uh, Dr. Mark Phillips myself, it was through talking with Garrett and talking about potential speakers that he introduced me uh, to Dr. Mark Phillips, and so I'm going to have him come up and um, 
just to introduce him in a second. But I just wanted to say, first of all, uh, a big thank you to all the cooks that, uh, and all the people that set up. Uh, Ken and I were saying, you know, we could just sleep in till 8, and it would just uh, set itself up every, every uh, Saturday morning here. So anyway, thank you guys. Um, anything else? Okay. Well, Garrett, come on up. Guys, we ate all the bacon. We ate all the bacon, boys. We ate it all. I checked. All right. That was a, that was a good move. Listen, um, I love you guys so much. I'm so glad that you guys rallied today. Uh, the Lord put this on my heart very clearly to have uh, Pastor Mark come out and, and talk. Pastor Mark's actually my godfather, and I grew up going to his church, Christ Church, in Colorado Springs, Colorado. And through Pastor Mark and his wife, Angela, uh, they were the ones that actually told me about God Speak. They said, you guys got to check out this church. They're open. It was in the middle of the pandemic, and that's, they are the reason why uh, I actually ended up here at this church. Uh, I love this man. He's my godfather. He is not only so brilliant, but the way he delivers his energy, uh, his knowledge of the Bible, his personality. He's a true shepherd, and uh, I'm just so blessed by him. I'm so grateful that he got to come out. So please give him a warm round of applause, Dr. Mark Phillips. Love you, love you, love you. Well, it is uh, amazing to, to uh, be here and be introduced by uh, Garrett, who was this uh, little kid growing up in my church, and I was the one who was saying, oh man, he is, uh, he's going to be in church ministry someday, and they're like, oh no, he'll do this, he'll do that, he'll do that, I said, no, 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 he's going to be in church ministry someday, and here he is in church ministry introducing me to speak at your church. Uh, so God is good, and uh, God is real, that's evidence enough for me right there. I became a believer through the back door of science. Uh, I was an analytical biochemist and animal surgeon at Vanderbilt, and I was not a believer. But as we started cracking the genetic molecular code, it became obvious this was a very complex program, much more complex than any software we would ever even conceive of dreaming, quaternary instead of binary. So I realized there had to be some kind of a mind or minds or some force behind that. And I started this long search to find this mind or minds, whoever it, he, she, they happened to be, and went on a long journey through many, many different uh, religions and philosophies. And I mean, I was whacked out. I was in a kundalini ashram one Sunday, spent some time at a Buddhist temple. I got heavily involved in martial arts. And just as you can imagine, I remained empty because there's that hole in the heart, in the soul, in the mind of every human that only the Savior Jesus Christ can fill. And so after many years of this searching and this longing to find this mind, uh, the Lord looked at this arrogant, ignorant, prideful young man and said, I think now he's come to the end of himself. Now he's ready. And he started bringing Christians in uh, to my life, into the lab. I started doing some uh, research with a, a fellow doctor there who um, was a believer and started introducing me to some of the more scientific concepts. And I'd actually been raised in a Christian home, but it was more of the social gospel in the United Methodist Church. Uh, I came from a long line of pastors. My grandfather, his father, his grandfather, his great-grandfather were all Lutheran German pastors going probably all the way back to Martin for all I know. And um, so I had been exposed to it, but I, so I thought I knew what Christianity was. And my idea was, oh, this is a bunch of narrow-minded, judgmental people who are holding back the progress and evolution of the planet into eternal peace in the age of Aquarius. Yes, I was a nutcase. Um, so the Lord finally allowed me uh, to come to the end of myself. And a very long story short, a 15-year story is, is what it was. Uh, one night I was walking... Uh, 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 with my best friend and my wife in the Vanderbilt campus. It was kind of chilly. We went into this uh, basement of a building there to kind of warm up. And when I stepped through that door and I felt the warmth of the room, the warmth of the Lord filled my soul. And I had started this journey long ago with a demonic presence. 
that said, you shall know all truth. And I thought, okay, it's up to me. Well, this was a very clear voice from the Lord, and he spoke to me, and he said, you know I am the truth. And right there in front of my wife and my best friend, both astounded and very disappointed, I became a believer in Jesus Christ. Turns out later, the basement of this building happened to be Planned Parenthood. So God can work wherever he wants, however he wants. He is Lord of all indeed. My wife said, well, this means divorce, as you know. And I said, well, if it means that, okay, I'm sorry to hear that, but I'm staying with my Lord and Savior. I know who he is. She was much wiser than me. And two weeks after saying we're going to be getting a divorce, she was coming up out of the baptismal waters that I had been in two days earlier. And it was a good thing for the reasons of eternal life because two years later, after we had had our first child and were pregnant with our second child, she was diagnosed with cancer. Uh, we lost our second child in the womb and then a year later, she passed on to be with the Lord. And then I met my precious princess Barbie doll love bunny, Angela, who Garrett knows, my true love. And uh, she's the one who sent me on my way to study more theology because every time I'd come home from the lab or doing surgery on animals, I'd start reading commentaries and I'd study the Bible and I was obsessed with it and listening to sermons. He says, what are you doing? You're crazy. Let's stop this nonsense at Vanderbilt and go study theology somewhere. And I said, okay, where do you think? She said, how about Oxford? I said, sure, let's go to the hardest, oldest university in the world. They're a bunch of liberals. Yeah, right. And so we went because she and God always gang up on me. And that started this, uh, this long uh, journey of comparing science and religion. And that I'm now in full-time education and I teach biology, biochem, chemistry, and a course called Science Apologetics. You're going to get a taste of that today, gents. And I want it to be more than just an intellectual exercise. I really want this to be encouraging to you and that you will see the fact that God makes himself so obvious in nature is because he wants himself to be obvious to you personally and so that you will see his eternal power, his divine attributes in nature, Romans 1.20. You will understand that if he can handle the expansion rate of the universe and he can handle the strong and weak nuclear forces and every, sin, every single one of the 10 to the 95th power atoms of the universe, he can handle what's going on in your life. So there's this great story of uh, Sherlock Holmes' American cousin uh, coming to visit him. And Sherlock, he, like Sherlock, he was a PI, a detective. And um, Sherlock was on a really busy case in London. And there was this case that he wanted Watson to look into up in the, the Castle Vale. It's just, uh, just west of the Oxfordshire area. And they went up, um, he said, he asked his cousin, he asked his cousin, John, to go 